Welcome back to Cactus Core Play Zero Escape 999. My name is Kavandre. My name is Bobby. Last time we went through the number six door with June, Santa, and Ace, uh, which went down here into this uh, boiler room. It's a very long boy. Um, we're still in the middle of this escape room. We haven't finished it yet, but uh, we put some coal into this boiler and all that. So it's been a pretty good time. Um, and we're in the middle of a cutscene, and we decided to just, you know, stop it there. Yeah, it was at the 30 minute mark, and, you know, we're about to light up the boiler. It seemed like a good little cliffhanger thing. Like, oh, is something actually going to happen, or is it just going to fizzle out? Yes, please. Always, always end on a cliffhanger. That That's what I've been told. Yes. That's how Game of Thrones became popular, and Walking Dead. True. Mostly Walking Dead. Yes. Anyways. So, yeah. Any any other odd notes? No. I gotta say, this recording into the uh, the back room, rather than out where we were doing it before, sounds a lot better. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, it's kind of just more comfortable. I also agree. Is it more comfortable for you? I felt like that would be less comfortable. No, it's more comfortable. Mostly because the ground here has carpeting, so my feeties don't get cold. Feeties, yep. Yeah. Agreed. All right. Anyways, back on to the game. Junpei, hand me your matches. What makes you think I have matches? I see. Then how are we going to light it, you dumb shit? Perhaps there's a device nearby that would allow us to remotely ignite the coal. Let's take a look, shall we? Some sort of ignition device, huh? I mean, we had matches earlier when we lit the candle in the in the room. Yeah, you used up all your matches for that. You're just very bad. You had like 20 matches, and it took you 19 failures to get one success. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Should, uh... Probe. Hey, these are on now. Hey. Is this... I think it might be. It probably is. I think this is how we might have not the furnace. That means that if we move that thing down... All right, let's do it. Here we go. Hey, Junpei, Ace, look at this. There's big gears turning under the boiler here. Mm hmm. Whoa, big gear. Oh shit. Well, that's a hell of a thing. The gears. They're spinning. The hell are you guys waiting for? Let's start looking. Gold disc. Sure. Okay. The gold disc. It has a number of lines engraved on it. I can make out three colors here, red, blue, and black. Hmm, I wonder what they mean. More red, blue, and black. The bronze disc. It has a bunch of lines on it in three different colors, red, blue, and black. Fantastic. Like the Wendigo. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. This ship belongs to the Wendigo. <laughs> the silver disc. It has a bunch of lines on it, but the red ones are really stand out, right? The red ones, huh? Alright, well. Now we can go up the stairs to this thing. Looks like this thing unlocks the door. There's a depression here, just like my own, that looks like the outline of three circles laid on top of each other in a triangle. Maybe... <laughs> those three discs together into this thing you can be the one who saves me <laughs> there's only one way to find out let's stick them in huh that's odd nothing's happening maybe you're I don't know putting them in the wrong places perhaps you have them facing the wrong direction perhaps you should rotate the discs to make some of these lines connect to one another hmm well no harm in trying Yes, yes, I, I understand. Yeah. Alright, so... I mean, okay. Like, I feel like I want that there. Oh, yes. This is my foolishness here. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't... Yeah. No, I don't 
that'll work out. But I'll trade the silver. I'm gonna see what happens with that one. Boom! The red line's on these discs. I think maybe I can make a star polygon with these. He says after he did it. Classic Junpei. Yeah. You found it! I got it. Cannot get E flask. Yes, the door is open. Alright, Junpei. Why don't you get June now and why can't you get Ye Flask? <laughs> Santa and I will keep an eye on this door. Ye Flask is bolted to the wall. <laughs> why do we need to do that? Even if it shuts, we know how to solve the puzzle now. You just open it again. Well, I suppose that's true. Shall all three of us go and collect June then? Nah, I'm cool. I'll let Junbei handle it. Just wondering why the fuck you're volunteering me for shit. So are you only interested in being contrary? All right, I'll go get you, and I'll be right back. Oh, Jumpy. Are you okay? Yes, I'm fine now. I'm sorry I made you worry. Let me check. Ah! Good, you're feeling a lot better. Are you sure you're all right? Oh, you're such a warrior, Jumpy. Oops, I meant warrior. Yes. All <laughs> right, let's go. Go where? All oh, right, I didn't tell you. We got the exit open, so... Great, let's go. Oh, it's... Santa? What are you looking at? And this was the scene where they unveiled the Nonary Games thing. Uh, the remake. Was they showed they showed this part of Santa looking. Oh, okay. Because a part of me, expecting him to turn it around and it be a smash invitation. <laughs> <laughs> I can only dream. <laughs> it's a photo. It's, it's my sister. My sister. My sister. Sister? Santa, you've got a sister? Yeah, kid was cute as a button. She was only about an inch tall then? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> She's so dumb. <laughs> uh, sorry. I guess an inch is a little large for a button. Probably more like a half inch. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you looking at it? I was her Santa Claus. Wait, what? Have you ever heard the story of the two Santa Clauses? It goes that a long time ago, there were two Santas. One of them wore white, and the other one wore black. The white Santa gave presents to good kids. And the black Santa played tricks on bad kids. Santa is fish. <laughs> they went on like that for a while, but eventually the black Santa's tricks started to get worse and worse, and he became Krampus. Pretty soon, the white Santa couldn't stand it anymore, and he stabbed the black Santa to death. Rude. When he stabbed the other Santa, the white Santa got blood all over his clothes. And that's why, these days, his clothes are red. You could say that red is all that's left of the black Santa. I wonder which Santa I am. The white Santa or the black Santa? Half I an don't inch. fucking know, Santa. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's go. Inch is a little large for a button. June, what the fuck? <laughs> hey, what are you two doing? Let's get moving. Come on. Let's go. Yep. You're finally back. Sorry we took so long. Yo, oh, hey, look, the door closed again. What was that, Santa? Shut the fuck up. Let's go. Well, this certainly is a room. Yes. Is this a warehouse? No, I believe this is the cargo room. This must be where they store all the vessel's freight. There are wooden crates everywhere. I wonder how old they are. Well, we probably ought to start with finding the exit, right? Let's get going. It's another puzzle. 
this one I'm not very good at. Oh yeah? Yeah. There's there's one thing at the end of this one that I'm gonna fuck up a few times. Oh, okay. So well, you, maybe you can help me out. Oh, well, let's we'll figure it out too. What the fuck is this? It's locked. I guess we need a key to open it, huh? All of the boxes have numbers on them. What if we need a different key for each? Oh. He spent down and picked up something that had been sitting next to his to the box. Junpei, take a look at this. It's a picture. No, wait, is that a card? Oh shit! A card with Lotus's face printed on it. Oh. Well, this is quite nice. There's some numbered boxes and cards with pictures of all of us. Does that mean we need to collect the cards we don't have? Yes. So we'll collect all of them first. We've searched all the boxes. There's nothing in them. Oh. A card with Seven's face printed on it. A card with Snake's face printed on it. Come on. This is Kum Tora's card. <laughs> you know, looking at this photo, she's kind of cute, isn't she? <laughs> I'm just doing it in my voice. It's why fine. Yeah. I'm totally huh? cool with that. What's up? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Why does her smile make me feel cold? <laughs> yeah, don't be talking about, you know... It's Ace's card. You look like some kind of European lord. Oh, my headshot. You want to see it? It's actually a pretty good picture. No, I don't need to see it. In fact, we really ought to get back to our search. I don't want to see that shit. Yeah, it's like me with a picture. I never ever want to see my picture. These crates are a lot smaller than the others. They look like they're the children of the other crates. What a thing to say. <laughs> Junpei, that sounds like some sort of fairy tale. <laughs> really. I don't know, man. You ever think about how crates would reproduce? Doesn't sound like a fairy tale to me. What Junpei's the fuck, like Junpei? A strange man. This guy. This card is the ninth man on it, and I'm not doing the voice. This fucking guy. He is the first victim of this nonary game. Actually, come to think of it, he was acting pretty weird. I wonder what his deal was. Man, the guy in this card is one good-looking son of a bitch. Way more class than that other chump. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? No? What's your problem? Didn't say I meant you, did I, chump? Shit. Chump at. <laughs> Shadow spot. <laughs> A box. There's nothing inside. Let's see. Oh, oh. There we go. <laughs> There's something inside this crate. Not cool, man. You took this picture without my permission. It looks pretty cool, though. You look really handsome in this picture. Hey. Oh. <laughs> hey. Knock it off, lovebirds. What? What? We're not a couple! Not at all! Not in any way! I might get what? <laughs> it's like my favorite dialogue in this game. It's pretty great. Pretty great. <laughs> this must be... Oh no! Don't look at it! I'm not cute at all and I'm not photogenic and I don't look sexy either. Next to Clover, my skin looks gross. And I'm not sexy like Lotus. I know guys go for women who look like Lotus. But... But... But, I'm trying to, I'm doing the best I can. So please, don't call me a board or a trash can or a cutting board. Uh, wait a minute. I haven't said anything like that, have I? Uh. <laughs> She's so defensive. Yeah. Alright, that's everybody, I think. All defensive about being a carpenter's dream. Just rude. Now we finally have all nine picture cards. Carpenter's dream. Flat as a board, never been nailed. <laughs> <laughs> we just need to insert these cards into the slots at the front of each box. You know which card goes in which box, yes? Uh, yeah, of course I do. It's really obvious. You just match our numbers to the numbers, and you pop the corresponding card in the right box. So for instance, the card with the picture of Ace on it goes into box one, the card with the picture of Snake on it goes into box two, and so on. Ah, ah I see. Huh? What is it? I'll leave the rest to you. Hey, wait. What's wrong with him? Oh well, whatever. 
Time to solve the nine boxes puzzle. Ace card in box one, snakes and blood under two. Just need to do the same for the rest. And finally, the ninth man's card into box nine. Yeah, they opened. What the? Nine <laughs> pins? Bowling? Nice. I guess I'll take them with me. Whoa. Number nine. So yummy. Yeah. Just <laughs> these stairs, they go up three stories. What are you waiting for, Junpei? Whatever. I'm going. <gasps> oh, hello. Some sort of boxy device. It's boxy, see? <laughs> and I was like, you was a trollin'. Like, I is not a trollin'. I is boxy, see? <gasps> there are six holes here, and it looks like the pins I just found would be a perfect fit for them. Fucking love boxy. <laughs> Unashamedly, unabashedly, non-ironically, love boxy. Yeah, he's a local, so it's fine. Yeah. The ones you found in the nine boxes, right? Well, why don't you try it? Alright, let's see what happens. I think two, four, and six should go on the top part. Three, five, and seven on the bottom part. Well, some of them let up. Yeah, three and six. I wonder if there's some kind of rule that determines which lights go on. Well, I put the two, four, and six pins on the top part, and the three, five, and seven pins on the bottom. Hmm. You think... I think maybe it's the digital root. The digital root? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. 2 plus 4 plus 6 equals 12. The digital root of 12 is 3. Therefore, light 3 turns on. 3 plus 5 plus 7 equals 15. The digital root of 15 is 6. Therefore, light 6 turns on. Makes sense, right? I see. The lights that match the digital root of pins inserted in the top and lower parts will light up. So that's how it works. Oh, there's one other thing I'd like to check. Well, if he wants to try, he's certainly welcome to. So, he put the 1, 2, and 3 pins on the top, and the 6, 7, and 8 pins on the bottom. Oh. It turned off. 6 plus 7 plus 8 equals 21. The door of 21 is 3. Therefore, light 3 turns off. 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 6. The digital root of 6 is 6. Therefore, light 6 turns off. Oh, I get it now. The digital root for the pins you insert is the same as the number of the lights that are lit. Those lights turn off. Yeah, looks like that's the trick. Alright, now we know how it works. You want to give it a try? Wait, you mean you know what we're supposed to do with these lights? Well, no, but I figure we could try and see if we can turn them all on, you know? I figure something's gotta happen if we can manage that. Turn on the lights, huh? Okay, Junpei. Let's make sure we know how this works, alright? Yeah, yeah, I think we got it. Yeah, fill the holes. That's just, you know, human goals. Alright, let's do it. Alright, so stave it off. One, two, three. Now you can count to three. Oh, well, that's six. That's six. So now we need a digital root that's not six or nine Lamau. <laughs> okay. Uh, four, five, and seven? Yeah. This is better with the mouse. There we go. Cool. So, let's get a digital root of eight. So we need 17. So what, that's, uh... How about just 5, 2, 1? Oh, okay, fine. 5, 2, 1, and then let's get a digital root of 1 if we can. Uh, I don't think we're going to be able to. Not with what we currently have. But if we do, I think, 9, 8, 3, that'll get us 2. 9, 8, 3? Yeah. Cool. So we need to make 10 to get 1. So, uh... 7, 2, 1. 7, 2, one. And then something to get 3, 4, or 5. Um... Let's see. 3, 4, and 5, right? Uh, no. 
Yes, that, yeah, my bad. Cool. Now we no. need to get four and five. Yes, so, uh... Nine, one, and two would make twelve, which would make... Okay, so we want nine, one, and three, right? Yes. Okay. And now we need 16. Six, 16? Not 16, 14. 14. Which would be just 8, 2, and 4. Boom, 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 boom. F. Fucker! We failed. All the lights are on and the shutters opened up. Hey, does that mean... Yeah. We gotta do it again. Man, and I thought I was doing so well. Alright, so... F, as we discussed earlier... Should be 15. Oh, is this one of the magic boxes we got to make it 15 in every single direction yes. and all that shit? Okay. It is exactly that. Okay, so we got nine holes. And there's an F up above them. To pay respects. Yes. I don't know what that F means, but I do know one thing. What's that? This time, there are nine holes. So we need to insert nine pins. Man, that's boring. Well, why don't you just try it, alright? Alright, put five in the middle. And then we can just work around that. Cool. So, uh... Let's see. do do ba 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 Let's put nine on the middle left. And then one would have to be on the middle right. And then, do do do, we gotta probably put. Would it? Yeah. Wouldn't that be 16? No. Oh, we're not doing. Never mind. I was still in digital root mode. mode. Ah, yes. No, it is not that. Yeah. All right. So now we need to figure out nine plus two, probably small numbers, to equal fifteen. So yeah, and then that would mean eight in the upper right-hand corner, and then that would be yeah. So nine got... plus two, so we need four. Yeah. Four plus eight is twelve. Twelve. So, you so need we need three. three. 3 plus 5 mm -hmm. plus 7. seven. Yep. And then, and then 6 in the bottom right. Ba -ba -boom. And that's how you solve that. There we go. All pins inserted. All lights lit. AF fam. Is, is that the one you had problems with? No. I mean, okay. yes, but no. We did it. Now, if you are wondering why you put 5 in the middle, it's because it's the odd one. All the other numbers had pairs that add up to 10. Right. 5 didn't. So if you put it in the middle, then you just turn around it. There are other solutions. Five doesn't have to be in the middle, I don't think. But it's just easier to figure out if you put five in the middle. Right. It looks like there's electricity going to the monitor on top now. All right. Let's see if we can activate the device on top. A green button, a red button, and a lever. I wonder what these do. I think this might help. What, what the hell is this? Where did you find this? What is that? Where'd you find it? Oh, I found it when you were messing around with the pinholes. It looks like instructions for this thing. According to what it says here, this thing's a remote control for... that. That? Yeah. That. What's he pointing Oh. That machine over there. Apparently it's called the Pushmaster 5000. That's what uh, I'm also called. Yes, can't, ag can't agree. Are you serious? <laughs> Whatever, so what are we supposed to do with the Pushmaster 5000? Well, what the fuck do you think? You see the coffin over on top of the crates? Yeah. Don't you want to know what the deal is with it? I do. You want to check it out? Yeah. Alright, how do you think we're going to get there? Well... Uh, there were some crates on the right side of the fence that someone piled up upstairs. stairs. Maybe we make a path to the coffin from there. How would we do that? Line up the crates, I guess? Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, I guess it's just... Bleh. 
I guess this is just another of Zero's puzzles. Yeah. Anyway, let's give it a shot. Oh, looks like the Bushmaster 5000 runs off a battery. So to keep it from using up its energy too fast, it's been programmed so that it'll only start moving once its path has been completely programmed in. All right, I'll keep that in mind. New material has been added to the file screen. Okay, yeah, I'm bad at this. Uh, once I want to send my orders to the Pushmaster 5000, I just pull the lever. Okay. All right, let's give this a try. Sure thing. Just keep in mind that there is a limit on the battery, all right? The battery dies after 50 moves. At least that's what it says in the manual. 50 moves, huh? Also, keep in mind that the Pushmaster 5000 can't move the heavy metal crates, okay? Got it. Yep, when a square adjacent to the Pushmaster 5000 is touched, the Pushmaster 5000 will move to that square. If there is a crate in the way, the Pushmaster 5000 will push up to a single crate. Move the crates appropriately and efficiently and fill the yellow areas. So I need to get these four boys here in under 50 moves. And I can't move these metal boys. See what I'm saying? Huh. Okay. Push that top one to the right, all the way to the right. Go down two, left one, down one, right one. No, oh crap, I think we fucked up. Yeah, because I think I need to push, I need to push one up here from below. Yeah. So, I, I'm pretty sure I need to start like this, though. I'm, I'm reasonably sure that's how I got in the first place before. And then... I think the right idea is to move this one over. The problem is, I could probably do this reasonably easily, right? But I'm just gonna run out of moves. Yeah. Yeah, then you can just push that one down and then scooch it over and then scooch the bottom one over. But you're gonna run out of moves. It was only one move away, <laughs> son of a bitch. There, yeah, you feel free. Okay, so... Hit the lever. Well, that wasn't the right thing. Yeah, okay. Okay, which is fine. Now it gave me an extra move, so we would have fucking done it. Rude. <laughs> that is pretty rude. And then you just have to. Yeah. Yeah, I always spend an inordinate amount, of, inordinate amount of time on this puzzle. To the point where I remember parts of the solution, but not the actual solution. Which, this is pretty much the same thing we were doing before. And I think I've just found a way to do it less efficiently. <laughs> okay. Thank you. 
<laughs> Got it. Nice. Okay. Cool. Okay. Uh, Bobby's done putting in the program. What do I do next? <laughs> Just be quiet and watch. See? It's moving already. Awesome. Pushmaster 5000 did just what we told it to and lined up all the crates. Great. Now we can reach the coffin. Now we, we just need to climb those crates over by the fence. Yeah. No worries. Just climb that shit. Spooky coffin. And the gangsta style. <laughs> Mummy! Just kidding. Really? Look, I haven't got all over great, man. Just whatever. Just open it. Okay, okay. <laughs> a small key and a motherfucking gun. <laughs> yeah. Got, got that thing on it. <laughs> yeah, a revolver. Yeah, a revolver. It looks pretty old. I wonder if this is a... No. Oh. I wonder if this is a replica. From someone who keeps stealing my mind. This thing is... Are these real bullets? If this is real... You're not gonna take it? We're not gonna take it. Of course not. All something like this is gonna do is cause more trouble. It's a powerful weapon that gives one person a huge advantage. Something like that would be way too dangerous to have around. We're in enough danger already. Yeah, I mean, I suppose you're right. Maybe Zero put this gun here, hoping that something like that might happen. In other words, maybe you put it here to make us fight each other. In that case, we should most certainly leave it here. I, for one, have no desire to let Zero control me. Me neither. Okay, we've got that figured out, but you aren't going to leave the key in there, are you? Of course not. We'll take that with us. Cooper. Take the gun with you, too! What the fuck? A rusty key. Maybe I can use this. Here's what you do. You take the gun, you remove the bullets, give the bullets to the other people, you keep the gun. Good start. Right? It could just be a handy tool. You don't know what the fuck's gonna happen. Oh no, we're off the ship, but there's a fucking shark right there! Yeah. Shame we can't do anything about that. Or you find zero. Right? Yeah. He shows up with a gun, and then she's like, oh, he's this like, hey, get He's like, I gave you a gun in here, you <laughs> fucking idiot. <laughs> Yay! Looks like it's open, Jumpy. I see. This key should open this door. Hey, what are you waiting for? Let's go! Come on, let's go. Yes, <laughs> it's opening. Skeet, skeet. Shi shi sha. That should be an episode, right? Yeah, uh, that's that's good. We finished the escape room. We finished two and one. Boom. Yeah, good times. Hard to beat that. Making some clear progress despite us talking, you know, random shit. Yeah. So, yeah. It's good times. So, anyways. Cool. Uh, let's do shout outs. Why don't you go first? All right. So, my shout out is going to go towards Dow Strong Customer Service. If you've looked at knives and all that stuff, you've probably seen an ad for Dow Strong at some point. And I was kind of like, eh, whatever. They're like the Amazon knives. But I'd always heard good things about the customer service and okay at best things about their knives. But they have a single bevel series and they had a Honsuki there, which is kind of like a uh, special like boning kind of breaking down a chicken knife. And they had it in single bevel, which is great because that's what I wanted. Because most of the time when you find them, it's fucking double beveled, which is what most people use nowadays. It just switched to that. And I'm like, whatever. I wanted a single bevel one. And so I ordered the knife from Amazon because that's where it was at. And it showed up and it was fucking rusted. Because it turns out Amazon will take knives back as part of their return program if it looks like new. So maybe you took it out and you did like one or two test cuts with it and it didn't perform the way you wanted it to. They'll just rebox it and sell it as new because it's practically new. And that's fine. And for 99.9% .9 of stuff, I'm sure it works out great. That's how they can afford low prices. 
but on knives, there is moisture still trapped on it, and it rusted the fucking blade. Now, I have all this stuff, and I fixed it, but I still let Donald Strong know, like, hey, this is kind of fucked up. Like, I, I'm i already not happy with this knife, but then it showed up rusted, so fucking no. So they sent me another one for free, and let me keep the first one, because I had already sort of, like, fixed it and sliced part of my finger off. <laughs> so they're like, yeah, we don't want that shit back. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah, the, uh, the other one showed up extremely fast. It's very nice knife. It is still not the exact knife that I wanted, and I'm still probably not going to buy another one from them unless they have, like, something oddly specific that I want. Like, it's a single bevel, but it's not really. They It's just mostly sharpened on one side, and they have, like, a little micro bevel on the other side. It doesn't have the aura, aura that it should. So I'm still somewhat unhappy. But it doesn't matter. Their customer service was outstanding and fast, explained the problem, and yeah, it, it's hard to beat that. I can see why a lot of people go to them for the customer service. So, if you're buying knives off of Amazon, it might be hard to do better than Dow Strong. Just because if something's wrong, they really go out of their way to fix it. And the knife itself really isn't bad, just not quite what I wanted. Yes. Uh, as for me, I'm going to do a shout out to a man named Larry Tesler. Uh, he died about a week or so ago. Um... But he is the dude who invented cut, copy, and paste. Oh, yes. This one hit a lot of people. Boy. Yeah. Uh, so in, in computer stuff. So, you know, copying something and pasting it somewhere else is is he invented that, uh, which is yeah. something I use very, very, very often. Yeah. So uh, literally hundreds of times a day. Yes. We couldn't do our jobs without it. Absolutely not. Um, so a true legend was lost in in february this year uh so i'm just doing a shout out to him uh he he deserves it uh, a good lad yeah back in the super old computer days when he was working at xerox and then uh bill gates and all the other tech giants came walking in through xerox and then stole all their ideas because <laughs> that's what happened mm. yeah. and that's kind of what bill gates did anyway right and steve jobs yeah i remember they had an interview together and they, Steve Jobs kind of like jokingly accused, like, yeah, he kind of stole this from me. And Bill Gates went, I think we both stole from our rich uncle Xerox. And it's like, yeah, okay. Because <laughs> 90% of what we know from computers originated with the Xerox. And them just dicking around in their warehouse. And then they didn't patent anything because they didn't think it was sellable. They were wrong. Yes. Classic Xerox. Yeah. But yeah. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.